graphs. So we have a little uh, little graph here, some fun on here, but we did a survey. Who's your favorite algebra? Looks pretty evenly divided. And oh, look at this. I did get one vote. I believe it was my mother. Yes, my dad really prefers Mr. Bruss, but I think my mother voted for me. Thanks, Mom. All right, so let's take a look here. So we have some different representations here. We can look at these things a lot of different ways. They all represent the same thing. So this table, this input, remember inputs are X, outputs are Y. This input is the same as an ordered pair. So 3, 6 is the same as the ordered pair, 3, 6, and we know this is an X and this is a Y, and we can graph that point. We go over th 3, remember this X are my horizontal values, Y is my vertical values, so I go over 3 on the horizontal, then I go up 6, and there we have the ordered pair 3, 6. This table again here, I could just go right from here. I know 1, 4 is the same as this ordered pair, 1 over, 4 up. Last but not least, 5, 8 is the coordinate. 5, 8, that's our coordinate. 5 over, 8 up. So what I want you to understand right now is they're all the same thing, okay? The table, the ordered pair, the graph, they all represent the same function. And is it a function? Yes, it's a function because for one input, there's exactly one output, all right? So right now we have a function. We're going to graph the function y equals 1 fourth times x with the domain 0, 4, 8, and 12. Remember, domain, these are my x values. So I think one of the best ways to do this is set up with a table. All right, so I'm going to have my x's. I'm going to find my y's. My x, 0, 4, 8, and 12. So I'm going to plug these each in. So y equals 1 fourth of 0. Well, 1 fourth times 0 is 0. That's pretty easy. And we can come over here and plot that. 0, 0 goes right there. My next one, y equals 1 fourth of 4. 1 fourth of 4 is 1. So I come over here, go over 4, up 1, because that's the coordinates 4 comma 1. All right. My next point, y equals 1 fourth of 8. Plug in what's 1 fourth of 8. 8 divided by 4 is 2. So go over 8 on my x, up 2 on my y. And last but not least, y equals 1 fourth of 12. 1 fourth of 12 is 3. So I plug that in, go over 12, up 3. And right there you have, now we have our rule. We have our domain, our x values. We have our range, our y values. We have our coordinates, 0, 0, 4, 1, 8, 2, 12, and 3, uh, 3. And we have the graphical representation right there, OK? Take a look at this. The number of minutes spent working on math over the weekend. This is my favorite thing. All right, so the red, uh, that's more than 30 minutes. Now, remember, you should do 10 to 15 minutes every night. So over a weekend, that's three nights. So really, you should be doing 30 to 45 minutes. So let's take a look here. Red, more than 30 minutes. So how many people did it? Ooh, not a lot of people did that work over the weekend. And then 15 to 30 minutes, more than that. Just a little bit of time. Probably hit some of you hit it up in seminar. But most likely, you're in this group of spending no time on math over the weekend. Now, this is a serious problem. All right? You need to do 10 to 15 minutes every night. Every night on math. Okay, whether we have you or not, you should do 10 to 15 minutes. You want to stay on pace, and the best way to stay on pace is by doing this 10 to 15 minutes. If you need to do more, that's perfectly okay. Okay, but you need to do whatever you can to stay on pace. And we find typically Monday morning, Tuesday morning, that first class where we have you guys back for the week, we get no work out of you guys over the weekend. All right? Just because it's a weekend doesn't mean you can take it off. You really have to take responsibility for your education here, all right? We want to help you as best we can. you got to help yourself first, though. All right, so the table below shows the average score, M, on the mathematics section of the Terra Nova for the Baumwalter, Ramstein, and Kajan schools for the following years, 2006, 2011, as a function of time, T, in years since 2006. So it says since 2006, so zero, this would be 2006. 
because 0 plus 2000, and then this would be 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011. All right, so we want to graph this function. A couple of things. First of all, which of this is our independent and which is our dependent, or which is our x and which is our y, which is our input, which is our output? Well, I like the things of which depends on the other. The score depended on the year. Since this depended, this is our dependent, this is our y value, this is our independent, this is our x value. All right, so I'm going to come over here and label my x. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We won't need 6 and 7, but that's all right. Now, if I, if I went up by 1s, I'm going to run out of space, aren't I? Uh, I could break it down and maybe go by 10s, but what's going to happen is I'll have all my data up here, and that's going to kind of look ugly. So I'm going to spread my graph out. Now, I just can't go from 0 to what? I'm going to have this thing right here. It's a squiggly line. And what that represents is it represents a break, all right? Because you have to have a common gap, a common interval here. And I, if I have a common interval, uh, my graph's going to look strange. I, I have this squiggly line, so it's a break. So now I can start off. So let's see how many lines. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We want to go from 82 minus 68 that's 14, so I can go up by 1. So this is 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, right? So now I have a nice, it'll spread out the graph quite a bit, okay? So I'm going to graph 0, 68. Now also notice this line represents 69 or 71, but I didn't write it because it, it would just be too cluttered for me. I understand right now that every two lines is two, so every gap is one. So 0, 68. 0, 68 is right there starting off. 1, 73 is going to be right here. 2, 74 is going to be here. 3, 77 is going to be here. 478 will get you up to here, and then last but not least, 582 is going to get you all the way up here. Now you can tell this is real data because it doesn't go in a straight line. There's some gaps, there's some jumps and things like that. That's what happens when you have real data. All right, so right now we need to make a rule for the function represented by the graph. Then we're going to identify the domain and range of the function. So if we look at this right now, we have some points over here on our graph, we need to come up with a rule. The easiest way to do this is to find our domain and range first. So I'm going to find all the x's here. I'm going to make a little table. So the very first x is 1 over 1 up, uh, 2 over 3 up, 3 over 5 up, 4 over 7 up, 7 up, 5 over 9 up. It's the little things, people. All right. So our domain right now we know is the set of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And our range, we know the outputs are 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. So we need a rule. We need to say some rule where we get our y by doing something to our x's. Remember last time what we did? We looked here and we said, what can I do to 1 to get to 1? Well, I could add 0. 1 plus 0 is 1. But 2 plus 0 is not 3, so that doesn't work. I could multiply. 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 1, that doesn't work. When something simple like that doesn't work, it usually means there's going to be a combination of things. So maybe multiply and add, or divide and subtract, or something like that. What I do, I want to look here, up at my top. I notice that these increase each time by 1 which is great. Down here, I look down here and I say, what is this multiple? This increases by 2 every time. All right. When this is the same, top and bottom, I'm going to use this number to determine what I multiply with. The reason I determine why I multiply because this is constantly adding the same number. And repeated addition Repeated addition 
is multiplication. That's big. All right, write that down. Repeated addition is multiplication. So if I repeatedly add 2, I'm going to start by multiplying my input by 2. So now let's see what I have to do. So 1 times 2 is 2. What do I have to get to to get to 1? I had to subtract 1. Let's see if it works. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 minus 1 is 5. 4 times 2 is 8 minus 1 is 7. 5 times 2 is 10 minus 1 is 9. Holy cow, it works. We now have a rule. All right? And it would allow us, these were the same. Our change, our rate here that of change was constant the whole time, so I was allowed to do this. In fact, you can see this. This was the same. 2 over 1. I, 2 over 1 is the same as 2 divided by 1 is the same as 2. Right? So I just multiplied by that rate. Okay? Let's take a look at another funny graph here. Oh, we have um, two different website hits. So we have the hits on Mr. Kelly's Hello Kitty website. All right, you notice the dates. Oh, he's cool. Lots of hits here. Sporadic. Got almost 300 hits here. And we want to compare that to the hits on flipmath.com. Oh, oh, well over 2,000 hits. But, oh, I have to... I got these wrong. I'm sorry. Mr. Kelly's Hello Kitty website, much more popular than flipmath.com. Please believe. So, Mr. Kelly uh, making some money off his Hello Kitty website. He's a big collector. Please ask him any questions you want about his Hello Kitty collection. So, right now, you should pause the video and try these on your own. Great. Hopefully you do pause the video every time so you can try them because remember it's all about learning. You should be watching these videos to learn. So we want to graph the following rule with the domain 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's create a table. We have our x's, we have our y's. So our domain 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So let's plug it in. 3 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 2, negative 2. 3 times 1 is 3, 3 minus 2 is 1, 3 times 2 is 6, 6 minus 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, 9 minus 2 is 7, and last but not least, 3 times 4 is 12, 12 minus 2 is 10. Now, 0, negative 2 does not fit on this graph. That's okay. You don't have to graph that point then. 1, 1, we come over here. 2, 4, go over 2, up 4. 3, 7, 4, 10. There you have it. All right, so on this next one, we want to find a rule. So on this, let's first make our table so we can look at it knowledgeably. So it looks like I have 0, 2. Now, you have to be careful here because every half line here is a half. This is a half, not... It's not one, two, three, four. It's a half, one, one and a half, two. So then I have one, two and a half. Oh, man, decimals. No one likes decimals. Go over to two and comma three. Then we have four. Oh, I skipped one. Three, three and a half. And four, four. And then five, four and a half. All right, so we need some kind of rule. So we're going to do something to x. So there's something I can do to zero to get to two. I could add two. Zero plus two is two, but one plus two is not two and a half. There's nothing I can really multiply zero by to get two because zero times anything is zero. So it looks like we're going to have a um, a uh, combination here. So these all go up by 1, which is good. That means that whatever is on the bottom, if it's the same, that's what I'm going to multiply. From 2 to 2.5 is 0. 0.5. From 2.5 to 3 is 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5, 0. 0.5. So it looks like it goes up the same every time, 0. 0.5. Remember, when I repeatedly add something, that means I'm going to start by multiplying that number. So I'm going to start by multiplying by 0. 0.5. So let's see, 0. 0.5 times 0 is 0. How do I get to 2 then? I'm going to have to add 2. Um, let's try. 0. 0.5 times 1 is 0. 0.5, plus 2 is 2.5. 0. 0.5 times 2 
is 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. 0. 0.5 times 4 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. This works out just perfectly. All right? So 0. 0.5 or a half x plus 2. All right, so right now I'm going to show you a short clip from uh, How I Met Your Mother. He kind of plays around with graphs. And uh, remember, when once you pass this master check, you're going to go on to the review. There's a review worksheet. There's some review answers. There's a review video. All right, watch all that. Do the review. It shouldn't take you as long as a normal packet would because it's not old. Uh, it's not new material. It's all review. You get a whole day for review, but it shouldn't take you that. Get ahead. All right, use that time to get ahead and then pass the test. Best of luck with the rest of this unit, and I'll see you on the flip side.